guys, uh, Jessica Henry here. Just wanted to welcome you back today. Um, so glad to be here. Nice to see you guys. Um, I'm actually going live on Facebook and YouTube at the same time. And I chose to do that today because honestly, there's I'm, I'm going to be focusing on my painting. So there's not a lot of talking and chitter chatter that's going to be happening. So um, I thought, though, at first I would just do a little bit of talking here. Um, I, I have this painting here. Obviously, we haven't been working on this one together. This one I just finished. It is, um, hi guys, good to see y'all. Hi guys on YouTube. Um, this painting here on my easel, I'm going to talk to you about just a bit. There's kind of a glare on it, so I'm, a little, I'm just kind of sorry about that. Um, good morning, you guys, or afternoon, or wherever we are. <laughs> Um, this painting is going to be our newest release with Renaissance Creative Arts. I actually have like 11 hours of filming I need to edit and condense and bring down to a reasonable <laughs> video. It's going to be um, a really great, great video. I'm so excited about this. There's so many different things in this still life that I want to talk about. and. Um, you know, there's just the painting the silk and capturing some of these more elusive qualities, the roses. Um, really fought with trying to get the roses looking like they're glowing from underneath. So that's something that a, a lot of people on YouTube as well as Facebook have been asking me to demonstrate flowers and so forth. And I have to tell you, painting flowers is like my weakest, weakest. <laughs> so I, I was really intimidated. So um I'm kind of, I'm, I'm actually really happy about them, and, and I, that's, if that's one thing that I can really just pass on is be happy with your work, you know. We're always uh, learning and growing, and, and there's always struggles, but to be content and happy when you're happy with something you've done, it's awesome. That's what it's all about. So anyway, I, I finished this today, and I'm going to finish editing it, and within the next 48 hours, we're, we are going to offer the video of this plus my workbooks. I always offer a workbook with um, our videos. Uh, this is going to be in the next 48 hours we're giving you a discounted price up until March 21st, um, it's the first day of spring, uh, to get a lower price on this video. We always offer free gifts too with our videos if you're new to Renaissance Creative Arts. Um, join our Renaissance community and um, Go to our website, Renaissance Creative Arts, and, and just click on um, contacts and go and watch or go and, um, you know, just fill out the newsletter or just see what we're doing. It's really exciting. We've got um, this new launch here pretty soon. All right, so that's enough chitter chatter. I'm going to get into painting. And the deal with today, and this is why I thought, you know, I'm just going to go live on both Facebook and YouTube because um, I'm going to be have my back to you guys, so I won't be able to see your comments and so forth. But I just leave them, and I'll try to get back to them if you have questions or comments. Also, um, on YouTube, if you leave a comment during the video, I don't, I don't, I'm not able to get it. I don't know why. So, if you have a question or comment, wait till the video is done, and then post it like a regular comment on a YouTube video. Okay, guys, I'm gonna jump in. I am gonna get this one out of the way. So this is our new one, and eventually, hey, we're gonna be offering prints of this painting. So. Go to Renaissance Creative Arts if you like the painting and you want to learn how to um, improve your abilities. I, I'm going to have all kinds of information on that. So thank you guys for joining today. This one is the one I can't wait to work on. <laughs> Got to say, there's things that are bugging me like crazy about it. So I'm going to get these things taken care of today. For example, in the time that I've had off, I, I, this, this knee here is just making me crazy. It's like... Um, it's just, I don't know. I made it like a right angle, like you're looking at it like, like this. And that's not how his knee goes over here. His knee kind of comes out, like if this is his knee, I painted it like this, it's supposed to go like this, okay? So I'm gonna work on getting some of these things in here a little more accurate today. And I'm also gonna work on this background. Forgive me if this video goes a little bit long today, but um, I'm just gonna just go. So. I won't be doing a whole lot of chatting, looking at your comments and stuff. So if I miss you, I'll get you later. Okay. All right. So let's get going on this. I have, um, I have my palette and in case you're new to what I'm doing here in the art world, I make these, these are, um, birch and they're, you know, balanced. They're ergonomically designed. I love these, the handle in here. It's just really soft and comfortable. All right. So. Anyway, that's my sales pitch on my palettes. 
<laughs> all right, what I have out here today, these are all my standard colors. And I'll tell you what, I use these all for plein air painting figures. I used only these for the entire um, still life I just showed you. Nothing exotic, just the same old stuff. I have titanium white, cad yellow pale, yellow ochre. And for that still life, I did do cadmium red uh, medium. And I'm not going to use that on here, but I do have it. Um, that is the only cad red that I will squeeze on once in a while. I have my, my burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, and phthalo green. And that phthalo green is how I got that turquoise and that big still life I just showed you. Okay, so let me get at this. Chemicals today, I just have my standard Gamsol, and um, it's in the little container here. And, um, <laughs> all right. Um, what is Danny saying? This still is beautiful. Oh, we are. We're getting, um, and that's, this is Daniel Hill Riedel on um, Facebook. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, just go to our website and you'll see all kinds of more information on uh, signing up for a pre release. Okay, so I am going to jump in. I'm going to still just leave the picture up here right for now because I'm going to be working on getting some of these drawing issues a little bit more accurate. Then I'm gonna start working on some of this stuff over here and I'll just take it down, okay? So let's go. I just have a size six flat bristle brush. This is a Signet brush and I like these because they're pretty sturdy. And I've got my Viva paper towels. And honestly, that's really all you need to get going painting. And my water, because I talk a lot. <laughs> mm. All right, so jumping in. Get my brush wet a little bit. I'm just gonna go into some, actually I'll go into some linseed oil. Oh yeah, I have linseed oil here too, okay? In my little container. So I get a little bit on my brush and I don't know, yeah, you won't be able to really see my palette much, but maybe I can kind of hold it up like, yeah, if I do that, then it's a little easier to see. All right, so this is making me crazy here, so I'm gonna get going on that. I see it as having quite a bit of yellow ochre, burnt sienna for the, the pants there. And then as it moves into shadow, I see more of the um, ultramarine blue in the shadow. So let's grab some of that. And this is how I mix. I just grab a little bit of each of the colors I'm gonna wanna use, and then I just slowly kind of paint them together. And I have a little bit more oil in here than I normally use, because I'm gonna wipe some of it off on my um, paper towel so there's a little bit on my brush. And I'm gonna go in and just kind of lay a thin layer of this value on here because I kind of I don't want to lose all this and so I'm just doing a thin holding my brush really loosely like this I do a thin glaze over that pushing that upper part of the thigh just back where it belongs for whatever reason this is how values can really mess up your painting if you have your values too light it's looking like too much sunlight was hitting this part of his thigh and that just does not make sense so by darkening this, now all of a sudden you can see how just by doing that, all of a sudden now that part of his thigh is back down under his arm and, and the elbow back here, it just feels like it recedes. And so that's how, that's what we want that to happen that way. And then his knee, this is getting all kinds of light hitting it, which would mean that his knee is probably like grossly swollen. So we need to, you know, Make sure it's not swollen <laughs> and make the proper shape. And I'm wiping a little bit off my paper towel because I had too much pigment on there. And now just scumbling. Somebody asked me over during the week, how do you scumble? How, how do, when do you do that and why do you do that? Well, in this case, I just, I don't want to lose the color that I have under here because it's the color of his pants. But I just, I want it to be a little bit darker, a little bit more in shadow. So you can see just by Gently scumbling over that creates that effect. Let's go down his calf like this. And honestly, I feel pretty good about that. Just, I'm looking in my cameras here to see. <laughs> this is a great tool if you're working at home to just set up your camera and watch what you're doing in reverse. So I'm not checking myself out. I'm actually looking at the camera. Okay, so here's the knee. I'm going to paint that in a little bit thicker. Whenever you use white or brighter color, it's going to be thicker paint. Um, so that's pretty close. Let's grab a little bit more ochre. And then um, grabbing that highlight on his knee. 
thinking about the anatomy of that kneecap in there, make it look a little bit more appropriate. Okay, pull that up. And then it kind of trickles down a little bit on the top of the thigh because it is picking up some light on the edge over there. And then just a little bit right here. Okay, so that's feeling better. All right. And then I'm just making a darker. So what I do here on my palette, again, I have light, sort of a medium, and then a dark area. And then I'll just work into those. One of the things that we're going to be offering on this new video, and what I'd like to be offering in the future more too, because we're going to be doing more online art academy, is a feature called uh, Palette Talk. Because so many people have questions about taking care of your palette, how you take care of colors, talk about mixing colors. And so I thought that this is going to be a really great new feature to just really enhance taking care of this and working and mixing colors. <laughs> so let's, and I'm also I'm still taking into account laying down nice pieces of paint here. That thin um, area where I was using thinner paint is kind of over now, so I'm starting to lay down a little bit thicker passages in here. Um, like that. And someone had also asked about, um, do I let the paint dry over um, on purpose? You know, do I let the paint on the painting dry before my next session? And I typically don't, I don't worry about whether it's dry or not before I start another session because um, I don't really care. If some parts are dry and I would like them a little bit wet, I can just go over it with a little bit more paint. Or, um, yeah, so if some places I want it a little bit drier so that I can scumble over it and to create a different effect, but whatever the case, it, it doesn't really matter that way. And someone else had asked if I put oil on my, my paintings to kind of wake it up next time I start painting, and I don't do that either. I think that that can have a tendency to kind of get uh, tacky on the surface and you don't want that because then next time you go to paint there's this weird slickness and you know I, don't, I find that it, I don't need that level of sort of surface, that surface texture. So what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of concentrating on the anatomy of this leg. If you're just tuning in, this was I'd mentioned at the beginning that this was a real area of anatomical frustration for me throughout the week. I was looking at it frustrated. <laughs> Couldn't wait to get going live again and wrap this up and finish it. <laughs> finish it and, and work on some of these. When I, when I am nearing the end of a painting, what I do is I will take the painting into different rooms and, and just set it against the wall and, and just, uh, kind of study it and um, see if there's things that need to be worked on. I'll, I'll usually bring a piece of paper with me and make a checklist. And then I'll go back to the studio after I've got my checklist and I'll only fix those things, you know, and my, when I'm in my own sort of peace of mind and I'm relaxed and I can look over the painting very carefully, that's what I'll do. I'll just make a checklist and uh, focus on those things. That's it. Instead of sitting in the studio and laboring, you know, and then picking and picking and picking it to death, you don't want to do that either. So, just make those clear decisions and commit to only doing those. Never again, no more added oil for me. Yeah, Dennis. Yeah, you don't want to add, you don't want to add those excess amounts of surface medium. I used to use all kinds of other gel mediums and um, things of that nature. And sometimes, like uh, Merge or Liquin, some of those mediums, like I come back here and this is sort of sunk in. And if you have a gel medium, a lot of those have like a, a, a varnish already in it. And so it's, you can kind of do a thin um, glaze over it. Hi, um, Tom on YouTube. Good to see you. You can do a thin glaze over that to kind of pull out. You can see his face has got some sunken in spots on there. And um, yeah, 
do that. Just put a thin glaze on it and it pulls it out and you can see where you are. I've worked on things before and honestly, it's so sunk in that you just, you can't, you can't see what colors you'd put down. So it's okay to pull it back out a little bit. I noticed with that still life I just showed you, um, the future's tuning in, it's the still life that we're going to be offering for our new um, demo video. That one has a few spots that are sunk in. It was really hard to tell um, what was going on. So I'm, I'm going to actually, <laughs> um, I'm going to actually take my, um, oh gosh, I totally lost my train of thought. I'm reading your comments and I shouldn't read your comments. <laughs> you guys are saying such nice things. Thank you. Um, I don't know. Anyway, if you can remember what I was saying, just leave it in the <laughs> Oh boy. Um, oh, I'm going to varnish over that a little bit to pull it out to see what I can see in the painting. A little bit more to see um, what areas that need work. I haven't signed that great big still life yet, so I have a little bit more to look at on it. But I'm, I'm pleased with the progress and I'm so excited to offer it to you guys. I'm thinking about all the different things I want to say in the workbook and um, all that, so should be good. And we always are offering free gifts, so that's a big deal. We're really getting um, quite a quite a Renaissance community going. We've got people from eight eight different countries just already, and we just launched like about seven weeks ago. Eight different countries all over the world, and really excited to see it developing into our dreams, what we'd hoped um, to do. Daniel Hill Riedel and I have been working tirelessly on this, and uh, always something new. We have big plans for things we're going to be offering in the future, too, so stay tuned. Um, the Online Art Academy is very near on the horizon. Very excited about that. All right, so I'm kind of getting what I'm doing with this is I'm just taking the brush, you can see it, just a little, it's like a chiseled edge, and I'm just scooping up some light, lighter of that skin tone, just putting down a little where the highlight is hitting. I might even do that on his nose too, because oh, oil paints will dry darker. Um, when you, like I did this last week, it'll dry, they'll dry uh, just a shade darker than, than what you put them down at, so make sure that you hit them up a little bit brighter next time you sit down. That's better. I know that's probably hard to see on the little tiny cameras, but um, anyway, if you follow me on Facebook and YouTubers, if you hop over to my Facebook, click the little icon at the top of my um, YouTube page, it'll take you over to my Facebook page. I always post these pictures uh, of the, the paintings so you can kind of see them up close. I wish that YouTube offered that feature, but um, and it doesn't seem to do that, offer posting pictures. so. Anyway, here we are. <laughs> Get his fingers back here. And kind of adjust this hand over here. I don't want to go too crazy on that the hand. I just want to keep it kind of simple. Okay, so feeling better about that. What I don't like right now is that there's a strong highlight on the cuff right here. So let's tone that down a little bit. I know that some of you are following along. Um, you're painting this also at your home with me along at the same time. I think that is so exciting. And if you want to post your pictures in the comment section, I, um, I think on Facebook you can. I don't think you can on YouTube. I would love to see what you're doing. And, um, you know, we're just really working on developing a community here and uh, working together. Someone had asked today if um, I'm going to be offering online art critiques. And that is something that uh, is planning. It's on the horizon for the Renaissance Fine Art Academy when we get that up and running. So when we have that going, you know, we're going to have a lot of good camaraderie. And I'm anxious to get that and see that going. Thanks, Bill. Exciting. Uh, a little bit of oil. I notice my paint is kind of just feels dryish, and I want it to come off the brush with a little bit more fluidity. I'm sure that's a word, right? Fluidity. 
And then, so this knee has some misshapen qualities. So, do I ever use retouch varnish? I do use retouch varnish. That's a great question. Um, and that was, uh, I was talking earlier about passages looking sunk in. And sometimes I don't have liquid or merge on hand. So, retouch is okay. For that, I know that there's people out there who would tell you, no, 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 don't use retouch. Um, it's I have never had any problems with it. If you just print, um, like for example, I could if its face was totally dry, do just a thin coat of retouch on his face to kind of help pull it out and see where I'm going with it. You can layer over it too. Some people suggest that um, you should um, take a little bit of turpentine or whatever and clean off your retouch varnish before actually varnishing the painting, but I would rather not do that because um, I'll do retouch and then I'll do paint over it, and so <laughs> um, I don't I don't want to take off my paint. Um, yeah, I'm feeling better about that knee. And I'm gonna get some of these folds back in there. Those pants, that's too straight. You know, I've got a little. I've got some of these wrinkles here in his pants that needed to, ooh, that's too bright. All right. Such a funny thing here, painting live, you know? You're just kind of vulnerable out there. You guys see all of my mistakes, but that's okay, because you know what, that's, this is what it's all about. Um, painting. What I like about going uh, live painting here like this is that when I make a mistake, because it's inevitable, um, I can show you how I'll fix those things. And I always have people who point out mistakes if I don't see them. Oh, you made that too long, or that doesn't look right. And so, hey, we're all in this together. <laughs> I felt his knee needed to come up a little bit. Just a little. So that was looking, I don't know if you guys can still see how I'm mixing, but... Um, the colors are just, I'm just using some really basic, basic colors. Nothing major, nothing fancy. Now I made it too big. Let's see, I'll tone that down a little bit. And keep that quiet back there. Um, taking just some ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, getting a nice dark, and then darkening this passage in back there. Just like that. All right, and then, um, so far, I'm still just using the same. This is crazy, no restart. Yeah, I'm just using the same size six brush. I probably should switch to a smaller one here, but that's probably a little too dark. Grab a little white and some ultramarine blue, and just like that, I take two little piles and then I'll mix those two together. This is. I'm gonna fix the passage of his shirt back here where. I kind of made, I think I made it too dark, where I just did just now. It messed with the anatomical shape of his arm. It kind of looks weird now. So let's get that fixed. All right, better. Okay, taking shape. <laughs> All right, now the light is hitting the top of his knee strongest here and then it cascades into darkness down here. And I love that movement of light. I'm always looking for movement of light in whatever it is I'm painting. You can see it on a tree trunks and on fruit in your still life or whatever. Um, be watching for how light moves across anything, an object. Let's grab some more of that alizarin. And, I'm sorry, that's burnt sienna and yellow ochre. Oh, that's gonna help that leg anatomy. So far, all I had on there was just the tone of the canvas. I hadn't even really done anything yet with this lower leg. So I, what I'm doing is I'm taking this darker color and I'm just mapping in where I see those kind of darker values down there. And the knee comes over this way. Also trying to get rid of these dark outlines. They, have, they don't need to be there. Usually for dark, I just use uh, ultramarine blue to darken it a little bit more. There we go. That's okay. Get a little 
darker weight back in there. I don't feel that there's this nice strong weight back in there. And the curve of that, that the weight of this leg is sitting on this leg. So I want to feel that. Pieces of paint, just lay down pieces like that. That's better. That's getting that's getting a little better. Okay. Moving on past that, down here. And the bench. I'll get the bench later. <laughs> Alright. Darker areas in here. Ultramarine blue, burnt sienna gives me a nice dark. And I'm just mixing it in with the ochre mixture that I already have. You can still see the progression on my palette here as I have sort of a lighter area and over to dark. This nice big fold there. Okay. And then I'm just going to grab some of this lighter color. I didn't even clean my brush because I'm using what I already had on there to just kind of keep that color of the pants congruent with everything else. Nice pieces of paint, a little bit lighter. Okay. And then down here, I'm going to grab a little bit of cad yellow. Oh no, I don't know. Let's just do yellow ochre. If I start introducing cad yellow to brighten that, it's it's just not going to read properly. That's better. And then some of that at the top. <laughs> you see yourself. Oh, <laughs> thank you, thank you, Jim. Um, yeah, we we have a we have quite a, a, a exciting business going here. A lot of exciting things happening with Renaissance Creative Arts and um, seeing some big things. Uh, if you're new to what we're doing um, with Renaissance Creative Arts, the really, really cool thing about all of this, and to me this is really the heart and soul of everything we're doing, is 20%, up to 20% of everything we make off of this, we are giving to different charities meeting world need and um, spiritual, physical, emotional, uh, a lot of the different charities that we're working with, um, oh, the things that they're doing, it's incredible. So we're just, we're exciting to be, you know, art is always best when it's serving a greater good, a greater need. And so that, that is something, this was Daniel Hilredo's vision, and it's just, it's been an honor and a joy to to just marry this whole thing together with um, art and education and meeting needs. So it's very exciting. We are going to be um, launching our first donation by the end of the month. And uh, some of the different charities that we're looking at, one of them, um, I, before we get the, the names out there, we have a few more details to work out before I can actually share the, the names of the different charities. But one of them, um, they, there are some orphanages in Kenya and Uganda. Uh, another one that I would really, my, I have a heart, a burden for, um, they get children off the streets in Thailand, uh, the, off the prostitution rings and um, just, it's just sad some of the things that that are happening and so that is our focus <laughs> making a difference oh I'm sorry what I have here is just burnt sienna yellow ochre a little bit of ultramarine blue and I think that there was some white on my brush <laughs> so I, I just wanted to get just kind of a standard almost chocolatey brown for these shoes and then I'm, I'm gonna go back through with the darker value now and start sculpting in the shadows back here where they're a little a little darker. Okay. I like this strong shape. Earlier when I began this painting I was interested in the no tan of all this and no tan is just um, it's a Japanese word for the the ratio and balance of light white passages to dark passages. If you were to take this all in just black and white, 
I like to see how um, the percent of my darks to lights work in relation to each other. And I also like to see um, how everything connects. So that's, that's something else that I'm trying to stay focused on here too. While I'm chit-chatting away. <laughs> I meant to not talk as much today. I just think of so many things. Um, okay, how are we doing? All right, I'm gonna get some of these darker fingers. Oh, that looks, that looks better, I kinda needed that. Just a little accent. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just set my palette down and um, start really jumping in. So I'm gonna kinda turn away so I won't be able to see all of you guys as much anymore. I'm gonna make tracks. So I hope I don't block the cameras. I kind of chucked all that. All right, getting a little bit of this white or light surface on the shoes. Just a really simple on top, like this, where the light's hitting it, like that. Maybe a little bit more. Let's go some more. Yeah, that's all that means. A little bit at the toe. And then same thing with, <laughs> okay, <laughs> thanks guys. I'm sorry I'm missing all your comments, but I, I do wanna try to get them afterwards. I always have so much fun on these, these live feeds. Um, it's so good to see you guys and feels a sense of community. I'm just so fun. <laughs> so thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to watch and join me and uh, just hang out. <laughs> okay, so um, my paint is a little thick, so I'm mixing up some ultramarine blue and some white, and I'm gonna grab some of this brown that I already had here. Just mixing that. And that's for the concrete down below. Yeah, can you, oh good, everyone can see, okay. Is there a lost edge on that foot? Oh yeah, I'm trying to lose a lot of edges here. And I'll just, I'm gonna do more of that as I start getting in this background area around the feet. I don't want to draw the eye too much down below here because it can be distracting. and um, I don't wanna draw the eye just like this. Sorry, I'm, now I'm getting to that place where it's gonna be really hard to talk. So maybe if I sit back. All right, going to town, I'm still here. And fixing that. So if you have questions about what I'm doing, I'll try to talk about what I'm doing, but um, for now I'm just gonna try to get this done. Working on some of the background areas here. Holding my brush on the side. I'm laying my brush on the side to try to get some of that scumble action in there. I'm getting a large chunk of white, large chunk of yellow ochre right into my blue. And so I'm just really mixing it like I mean it. Okay. And grab some oil. There's a lot of concrete down here, and that's a little bit lighter value there, so I want that really making the difference there. Boom, good enough. Under the bench, right in this passage, and then right down here at the foot. Scoop up some more. Down. No, it's down. This easel actually, I, I don't have a top holder thing on it broke years ago. <laughs> so I just kind of make do. No big deal. Someday I'll get it fixed. I just kind of want to suggest some of these darker over here, getting into some aggressive blues and browns. I kind of 
like the idea of this feeling like his thoughts. So I'm just gonna let this sort of fade to nothing. Maybe we can even just go like that. I do like to play like that. Who cares about dirty fingers, right? <laughs> Woo! Okay, so that's like just thoughts and ideas. Yeah. Okay. Having more fun than we should be allowed to have, right? I'm taking some white and some yellow ochre. The bench. And right up here. Let's get back here by his back. You know, I can't really see his bench, so. There. There's really not much there to work with. I don't have a lot of information, so let's go like that. Make that a little darker. To do those splatters, I just used, um, a little bit of thinner and, and uh, the paint thinner, Gamsol. Okay, let's get some more browns in there. And then I want to just take some nice dark and get it in between the slat, 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 the boards. I can't think of the word, those things. Now the legs of the bench, I just kind of want to just a little let them live under there. This is part of the bench too, so let's give that a sense of place. Oops. <laughs> so I apologize, St. Joseph, for not talking. <laughs> okay, I'll stop talking. Then. I always feel like if I, 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 that I need to fill the air with words, but I would rather just concentrate. So if you guys are cool with that, then I am just going to plow ahead and get this done. See, this needed more of a shadow under that needed to cast a shadow. Okay, that's better. All right, fun. Okay, now I'm going to get some of the information over here. And I think if I move this, you guys can't see. All right, then I'm going to put this right up here and see if that'll stay without causing too much catastrophe. I'm gonna get this bench over here and some of this information, just a little. value here because I want to connect him here with the bench but just sort of have it more of a suggested oops idea back there needs to be whoops it's getting away from me okay and then back here I think that that has a peaceful diagonal feeling like that. Okay, it's getting too dark. <laughs> so this is just kind of more abstract back in here, getting in um, some of these stones and, and bricks and things along the wall. I think what I'm going to do is start out with a like a darker mortar shape and then over that I will paint thicker globier um, 
rocks. So this is just a darker, you know, sienna, ultramarine blue. What I don't want to do either is get away from him too much. So I'll just do a little and suggest it. I like how this sort of feels like bricks rather than it's painted with detail to explain every brick. I think that it has more of a suggested feel that way. What I really do want to capture though is this old world Tuscany feel. And that um, We were in Triquanda, uh, Triquanda, Tuscany, when I took this picture of Dan. It's very peaceful, and I caught Dan. It was really relaxed. Um, thing here, he was just all, just relaxing. Grabbing some yellow ochre into that white. I thought it was a little too pasty. Okay. So to get some of this stone texture. I am just kind of uh, taking my brush and kind of turning and vibrating and like da -da 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 as we go along. Doesn't doesn't work if you don't make those little sound effects. Who says that? <laughs> Bob Ross. Got to make those sound effects or it won't work. Anyway, of course, we don't really mean that, do we? <laughs> it's just all fun. I'm just trying to create that texture in there, and uh, it's just really got this wonderful surface quality that I really want to try to get. Just seeing where I'm seeing. I have this sort of chalky white that I'm reusing at this moment, and I'm looking at where I see it closest. Um, thought that was Dan looking all Italian. <laughs> yes, uh, I'm just looking to see where these lighter tones are just focused around this area. I don't want to go all the way over here because I think that that would be distracting and too much. But uh, yes, yes, this is this is Dan looking very. Um, I kind of thought he looked like a little bit like Monet that day. I thought he had that that uh, Italian artist thing going on. French artist, I guess Monet would be French. <laughs> No, Dan is Dan is a very accomplished painter. And, uh, he was trained at classically trained at Pennsylvania Academy Fine Arts. And, uh, oh, his his classical work it's just stunning. Okay. So I'm kind of moving down the wall here a little bit. There's one of those rocks, rocks in there. Old Tuscan. I think that's kind of feeling like a wall. I, I don't want to get too nuts on there, otherwise it'll just kind of, ooh, this is fun, <laughs> get carried away. All right, so I want to get a little bit of information on that bench over there. So grabbing on a little bit of linseed oil and going into my sienna in blue. Looking at this shadow on this side of the bench, how's that? Is that the right angle? I think that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to add a little bit of ochre and white to that mixture to get this value in front of the bench. It's still not the lightest color that I'm going to use on this bench because that's on the top where it's picking up the most light. Okay, and then so that, grab some more white into that. <laughs> just going to squint at it and try to get that shape. Remember it's just to suggest it and I really do want to capture that, just the shape of that bench back there. Well, let's see if I can lose the edge up into the wall. That looks cool. Down, up, okay. So, now the legs. And that one's over in almost dark, swallowed in dark shadow. Let's go 
like this. Oh. What's happening? Okay, and then it curves and goes under. And then where it starts to hit the light, it's a little bit lighter. Oh, thank you. Thanks, guys. When I'm able to see your comments, I just, it's so nice. Um, I will get at them all when I'm done. <sighs> now I'm going to get a little bit of shadow over here. If you get some white in that shadow, it just starts to kind of kill it and flatten it. So you want to try to avoid getting too much white back there and under the, in the shadows. Now, um, I'm kind of getting to the place where, I, what I would do on my own time is I would take and just, if I really wanted to finish this, which I do, but um, just tighten all this up uh, on my own time. But for the sake of this demo, I'm nearing the end and um, things to look for. If you remember way back at the beginning of when I'd started all this, the concept, I, I always begin with a concept. What is it that I really want to say about this painting, this image, and what really struck me at the beginning? And keeping that idea in the forefront of my mind becomes the crux on every decision I make. So when I'm nearing the end, I have to ask myself in reference to my beginning stages, did I reach the thing that I really wanted to say about this painting? And what I wanted to say was how I, to, just to capture this overall feeling of um, Dan just sitting here relaxed, looking out, um, feeling peaceful. I knew that I was going to, obviously for the sake of this video, focus on the drawing anatomy and um, things like that since this is a figure study. So that was important at the same time and it was also important that I more than anything, capture that, that feeling of this place and um, the serene moment here with him just kind of there. And Did I do that? So what I would do then is just take this painting, and go off and be quiet in a separate room and ask myself, did I achieve that? Does he feel that way? Um, is there anything I can do to encourage that some more or do I feel that, you know, any more work done to this is going to distract? So those are things that I would be asking. And I think for the purpose of this demo, I'm pretty much, I think I've pretty much arrived at that. And um, I'm happy with the overall feel of the painting. I think that um, by adjusting those things that were really bugging me today, I can kind of rest a little easier now. <laughs> and uh, let's clean up some of this. But I hope that this has been helpful in um, instructing on the basics of figure work and how to, to really capture not just the drawing and likeness of a person or their their anatomy, how to get how to get that, and dropping verticals and plumb lines and using those different tools, but also how to capture the mood and feel of a place and knowing when to stop. Um, it would be fun and easy to go through and add all these bricks and all these other elements and so forth, but there comes a place where you have to say, you know what, enough is enough. I am going to take this and just live with it for a few days and see what else I can do. If I should do anything, maybe I should just be done and sign it. And, 
you know, it is what it is. Maybe I should add a pigeon. <gasps> no, <laughs> don't add pigeons. Don't add, you know, pots of geraniums and things like that. Sometimes if my main thing was this, I got to keep it that. Okay. So that's, uh, that's where I'm going to stop. And I think that that's okay. I'll live with it and see what else I can do. So Anyway, I just wanted to thank you guys so much for joining me in this um, now four-part series of Painting the Figure with Jessica Henry. And again, um, just to, to mention again, this is the still life, if you didn't see it at the beginning. Um, had a lot of fun with this one, too. Just, I just finished this. And so this is the new still life that we are offering as a video with Renaissance Creative Arts. I'm really excited to get finishing on the booklet for this and um, we'll be launching this in the next 48 hours you can get your pre-release order in place and uh, gonna have a lot of information on this and more go to our website Renaissance Creative Arts if you're on YouTube don't forget to like and subscribe and um, get notified when I put up new videos and all of that. So thank you guys so much for joining and um, have a wonderful weekend. All right. Take care. Enjoy your spring. Bye-bye.